Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his Thursday guest and expert, Mr. Jonathan Twomley. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing terrific. Michael, I'm just so happy to be back after our <laughs> hiatus from Thanksgiving. So uh, it's always, this is a highlight of my week. So I'm glad that uh, we're back on track. Thank you, but I, I know I missed it as well. Hey, one of the things that's really hit me the last five or six days, really starting since last Friday, which was a half day trading on the market, it's been kind of all over the place. Jerome Powell saying this, then Jerome Powell saying that, causing the market, the 10 year, all of these things to really gyrate. Something hit me the other day. And that is, I think many investors are repeating a mistake that I made 20 years ago. And the mistake was I wasn't investing. I was calling myself an investor, but if you really step back and you audit yourself, I had turned into a gambler. I had turned my stock portfolio into a trip to the casino and I was chasing the excitement. I stopped doing the work. I stopped reading financial statements. I stopped, stopped, stopped. And it worked for a while, right? I got blackjack dealt a couple of times and then I got smacked because I wasn't doing the work. So I think investing should be boring. I think too many people today are investing wrong. That includes the stock market, but let's be very clear. I think there are people investing wrong as LPs in syndication uh, as they are chasing past performance in the thrill and those things. So I wanted to ask you, do you think investors uh, maybe are investing uh, wrong today, given the euphoria? Yeah, well, obviously not everybody, but I do think that there is a lot of, uh, a lot of it out there, right? I mean, and, and anytime you're in an, env an environment like today where nobody has lost for a long time, right? We're yeah. in like record terror. I mean, we've had some blips in the stock market and it always bounced right back. And we, we, you know, crypto, the, the, the narrative in crypto now, if you follow, I don't invest in it myself. I think it's, I don't know what it is. So I don't <laughs> invest in it, but if, but I follow a lot of people who invest in it. Mm -hmm. And now the narrative is, uh, is essentially it will always go back up if it goes down, right? That that is that is like it's it's almost as if like it went down, therefore it will go up again, <laughs> right? So yeah. so so buy more or don't worry about it or whatever or it's 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 the super safest thing in the world because we all because somebody said it's going to be worth a million dollars one day, right. you know, per per coin. So therefore it is yeah. right. So anyway, I, I don't want to harp on Bitcoin too much, but the point is, I think. People, the market has been, in all markets, right? Not just the stock market or the Bitcoin market or the property market, but basically every invest investment asset has been supported by cheap money yeah. for a very long time. And uh, and I think there are a lot of people who, you know, if you're like, I don't know, what, what year is this, 2021? Mm -hmm. So if you are like under 40 and you kind of got involved in investing kind of in your late twenties, like a lot mm -hmm. of people do, mm -hmm. you've never experienced a down market. You've never experienced like a, an actual business cycle recession. Yeah. You haven't. And so I think a lot of people, and I'm not picking on people who are under 40 because no. the same, the same thing happened to our generation absolutely 20 years ago, which was that people came in when things were rising, they'd never seen a down market and they thought it's going to go up forever. And you're mm -hmm. surrounded by People writing books like Dow Jones 36,000 or 36. Jo yeah. Yeah. yeah Dow that? Jones 36,000. There was actually a book I was reminded the other day. There was actually a book called Dow Jones 100,000, oh which, which didn't get as much attention as the 36,000. Yeah. But when you're in that, when, when it is really start, a little vortex and it gets tighter and right at the right. peak, it gets just really it, tight. So it's a, it's, loop. yes, it is yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a positive feedback loop where you know, people start taking the, the lesson that you can't, you can't, can't lose. lose. Yeah. When you I, think you can't lose. Yeah. And, it, and or, let's be clear, it's also happening in the apartment market, right? The, you and oh, I yeah. both know two years ago, there were deals getting done at cap rates that we thought were crazy. Pandemic happens, a little couple months of freak out, then rates go to nothing, the rents explode. And these people that bought at what we thought was a bad time turned out to be geniuses. Yeah. The, the market made them. They got lucky. They got two years of, uh, they've got five years of rent growth in 18 months. They got cap rate compression, maybe of two points and they're exiting three years early. Yeah. But that means somebody else is buying. Right. And I, I see the same vortex in multifamily. I've seen some, I, I saw a, I saw a C-class property in California. 
uh, that is about the rent's about 25% below market, which means you, because rent control is on units, you can't raise rent. Mm. They're selling it on performa. Existing with existing rents, it's 3.2% cap rate. In the oh. C class, it probably yeah. needs $200,000 in immediate investment. It's, it's a beat up C class. I'm like, and then broker, I called the broker. I'm like, you're kidding, right? Did, was this supposed to be 13.2? He thought, no, 3.2. We've already got five offers. I'm like, yeah. what? I mean, this is so, I, I mean, look, this is, um, we're literally seeing deals trading like for, you know, when they traded a couple of years ago at 50,000 a door, you know, and we thought, mm. I just can't see my way to paying 50,000 a door for this. And now they're trading for a hundred thousand a door or more. Right. Yeah. And and so, so there are people who will say, we'll see you were wrong. The lesson there is it's going to keep on going up. That short term, that may be true, right? Yeah. But, the, but the thing, the, the issue is that, and we, you know, hindsight is always 2020, right? So you mm -hmm. can say, uh, you know, well, you, you were wrong. You should have bought that thing for 50,000 a door, right? You would have made money. Well, yeah, you, that's true. You would have made money if you'd had a crystal ball, right? right? So the 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 thing is the danger is not that some people bet and they and that it's they, they get it right the danger is the complacency that this bakes into the system exactly right? what i see happening and this happened yeah. in markets and it'll happen it's happening yeah. in real estate and and so when you say like your example of a c a c class deal trading at a three cap right i mean you have to put this in context which is historically you know there was a big premium right that mm -hmm. or a big discount i should say that you got for buying a c-class property yeah in this right? market it was about nine or nine and a half just for right so a lot speaking. of a lot of markets right you were getting for c when i started investing and i was buying c-class properties you were buying c-class at an eight or better all the time all the right? time and yeah. because that's what the market said the the risk premium was now i'll tell you what happened is that I bought those properties thinking like, hey, this is a great deal. I'm going to make so much cash flow, blah, 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 blah. Then what I didn't count upon is the fact that C-class tenants are the ones who are least likely to pay you, exactly. right? Yep. And that's why there's a huge risk premium, right? That, and so you couldn't really expect that high rate of return. You're paying a, 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 an eight cap to basically to get a, dis, you're getting a discount because of the, those issues, right? And your overall return is going to kind of wind up around the same place as like an A or a B because you have to, you've got collection issues and you've got deferred maintenance and you've got all, the, all these things that you have to deal with. And so you need to be compensated for that in the cap rate. Now, what you're seeing is almost no difference between the cap rates of A, B, and C properties, right? Yeah, exactly. Even though you have a much weaker tenant base and yeah. a much more expensive property to run because it's older and it has more issues right and so yeah. we're at the market we're at the point in the market now where the only thing that really makes sense is to flip right yes yeah right? Flip, so sure. so what people are doing is because cap rates are so compressed if you add uh you know if you add noi to the property you were going to get a huge, really fast bump, yep. right? So at a three cap, I mean, everything that every dollar that you add, you know, becomes basically like, well, I mean, my, my math brain is backwards, but it's, you're, you're adding like for a dollar of NOI, like $3 of value. I mean, it's yep. crazy, right? So, yeah. yeah. So you're, um, so what people are doing is buying, right? going in, rendering some apartments, adding to the bottom line, mm -hmm. and then- Yeah, they're almost doing a proof of concept, right? They're taking 20% yeah. of the units, dressing them up, getting an extra 200 bucks rent, and yeah. then, you know- And, and this, this, this will, the thing is, this will last as long as it lasts. Like, that's the problem, right? Like, it, it'll, it'll go on for a while, but then there will be some hiccup, and then things will, will change. And like, you know, we, we talked about this before, COVID, like if there's a recession, the, you know, what, what bullets do, does the Fed have left, you know, in its belt? 
it, it kind of shot all those bullets by going down to zero, mm -hmm. right? Plus now we have the huge stimulus bill. What, what else can they do now, right? If, there's, if there is a recession, like, honestly, what people who are like, oh, the, the Fed will bail us out, the government will bail us out, with, with what? Like, yeah. you yeah. know, I mean, so I, I think that that's like kind of a, a it's always, a, your investment thesis should not be, if things go bad, the government is going to bail me out. Yeah, it right? shouldn't like, be. Like Heads I win, be. tails I tells you yeah, lose. That, it shouldn't that, be that. Should, yeah, that should not be your plan, right? <laughs> it's sort of like it's 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 sort of like you know, like my plan. Oh, my! I'm going to finance my kid's college education by winning at blackjack in yeah. Vegas, right? Like it, yeah. it'll all be fine. Like it'll I'll win. Fine. I'll win. It'll be great. You know. Yeah. Or I'm going to I'm going to invest the the kid's college fund in lottery tickets. You know, like it's just. Like I just see a lot of that out there right now, too, where yeah. people are not really paying attention to fundamentals anymore because they become convinced that it's a no lose proposition. And and well, I think there's that. I also think there's a fair amount of people chasing the thrill when investing well, becomes the thrill. Yes, that's that, that's that near was, the end. That was what we saw. So when when you and I, you know, so 20 years ago when we were talking, you know, sort of when we went through this. Uh, oh yeah, know, we had our know, turn. Yep. Early lives, right? That. Yo, that was that was when day trading became a thing. Dude, right? I had people quit six figure oh, jobs to day trade. People were quitting their jobs to become full time day traders, right? And I mean, it was craziness, right? And and it, it, I mean, literally, it was like people were in it for the. It was when like online trading became available. Yep. Right. So you could do it yourself, which was never possible before. You could sit in front of your computer all day. And make trades, and like we all did it, right? Even mm -hmm. if we weren't day trading, oh, yeah. we were all we all had like our TD Ameritrade accounts, and we're like, "Ooh, I'm going to buy this now," right? Yeah. And and everyone was chasing like some news they heard. Oh, and frankly, it's even whisper. worse now. It was whispers. It wasn't even news. We were chasing whispers and yeah. rumors. And listen, it's even worse now because now you've got Reddit, you've got people like Wall Street you know, bets, yeah, Wall Street bets, and like <clears throat> you know, literally, I mean. Frankly, this stuff is borderline stock manipulation, and I'm surprised that the feds that the oh, SEC it, has, somebody will happened. somebody will eventually go to jail over this. Well, There's you know, no and you know when it'll happen. So this is when it always happens. The feds don't go after anybody when everyone's making money, right? It's when the crash happens, right? The tide goes out, like Warren Buffett says all the, the time. The tide goes out, and the people who bought at the top, based on that some, in, blah, blah, some, blah. some advice or whatever it was that they got from this guru person they then call the sec and, and they're so, like this son of a bitch like cost me money i you know and so that's when those guys get prosecuted and go to jail right it doesn't happen now when everybody's making money right wait till oh the, yeah the tide it's, goes out it's coming so but i but what i see uh you know the similarities between then and now, I think, are are pretty strong. Where people have kind of let go of the fundamentals. I mean, in some ways, I mean, listen, this, this is what I don't like about this environment. It's actually very difficult to be a fundamental investor right now because prices are so ridiculous. Well, you're, you're probably sitting in cash, which is very uncomfortable. Yeah, and and you and look, as a deal guy, you want to do deals, right? Like, and it's not. I mean, it's fun. That's part of the reason why you do it. But also, like, that's what, that's how you make a living, and that's what you do. And so, yeah. being able to not being able to do that. And listen, I so one of my good friends is a very very successful fund manager, and he's a value guy, right? And during that period of time that we're talking about back in the early two thousands, like, like he was getting crapped on and almost lost his job because it was all growth. Everyone's investing in growth, right? And mm. and and his fund was doing badly because yeah. no, nobody cared about value right it's and they're like what? we don't yeah. literally like we don't we don't need to do this work right yeah. because you can just invest in the next thing and make money yeah. then of course like it all crashed and burned right and value was left standing right and yeah. all those growth guys yeah like went belly up right i remember i think we're kind of in that same kind of period yeah. of time again but maybe even worse than before, because, you know, now it's like we didn't have like a stock bubble and a real estate bubble at the same time. Right. We had a stock bubble 
And then when that crashed, all that money went into real estate and created a real estate bubble. And then that crashed. Yeah, it was successive right. waves, not a yeah. concur. Yeah. But, so but, the Fed, the Fed has created this the last eighteen months. You can't lose. People were winning, and when people win, they tell people. People, <clears throat> when people win, they tell people they win. But when they lose, they stop talking. Yeah. Right. So that's this. This vortex is going on again. If you're investing on feelings versus fundamental, be careful. If you're chasing returns because of I've seen this too much in LPs lately, right? A couple of them called me and said, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about investing X, Y, and Z because so-and-so did, did such and such the last two years. I'm like, the market made them. They got lucky. Do you think, yeah. do you think you're going to see a repeat of this? Do you think rents are going to keep going up? People have a finite amount they can pay. So if you're doing it for the thrill and calling yourself an investor, you're done. But if, you're, if you want to call yourself a gambler and bet on thrills, wait, free, free country, do what you want. But don't call yourself an investor, but act like a gambler. I did that, lost 80% of my nest egg, and I still remember. And I, I want to also point out something which I think is very interesting about this. So there, there is um, there's a guy that I once interviewed on my old podcast. Now, his name is escaping me, but he, he, he does a blog called the Bubble Blog or the okay. Real Estate Bubble Blog or something like that. And, and so... I remember one of the, he said something really interesting to me, you know, well, who was it who lost their houses in the, in the crash of 2000, you know, seven, 2008. And I, you know, was it people who lost their jobs or was it people who had their mortgages reset? Or he said, no, it was the people who bought last. The last people who bought were the ones who lost their houses because they, I mean, when I say last yeah. people bought, last people bought at the top of the market, yeah. Yeah. right? And then it rolled so, over, yeah. And then it rolled over, right? And the thing is, you never know when that rollover point is going to happen because it happens very fast, right? It, it's just like that. Like, everything is fine. And my, then it's not. <laughs> my, my view, though, of investor psychology is that, like, and maybe I'm just imagining this, but I, I always have kind of felt that there is lurking in the back of, most investors mind this idea that this is not sustainable right mm -hmm. and so and they kind of know like wow the market has gotten crazy and something could happen which is why when you tell them that something could happen they get very angry at you yes. right right because it's not that they're like the people who are making the the possibility of the bubble bursting part of their analysis do not get angry when you say the bubble could burst and you could be left holding the bag because they're like, yes, I've taken that into account. I've done my analysis accordingly. I've run my scenarios. I've done my scenario planning. I have I know, stop losses at blah, blah, blah. Right, right. I've stopped losses or I know like I have long-term debt locked in on this deal. I there know that I know that if, you know, I've run the scenario so that if my occupancy drops to X, you know, if my, whatever, they, they, those are the people who don't get upset because they're yeah. like, yeah, yeah I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about this. It's the people who don't want to face the fact yeah, because they have not done their homework. They haven't done that work. Yeah. They haven't, you know, put in the time. They are just going with the flow or going with whatever is around them. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who get really, really angry at yeah. you when, because they know, they know the risks that they're taking on some level, but they just don't want to think about it. So yeah, you, you know what I it, you know what I think they think is they're going to be one of the ones that get out the door. That exactly. That they they think, think I'll sell early. Yeah, yeah sure you that's will. they that, and that's and and this is why the things falls apart so quickly because if it were if it were the other way around where everybody in the market was doing their homework and had to kind of plan for the worst, right? Then there might be kind of like a more orderly softening yeah. of the market or something. But the problem is since most people don't do their homework and also most people who come in at the top are the people who have been drawn in by all the talk. Exactly. Right? And they're not, they're not real investors. They're the nope. betters, right? Yep. They're betting. And yes. so they, that's why when the bad news hits, they all run for the exits and that's what causes the crash, right? Because you've got, that sell at of, any cost sell, sell that's right. you, sell. that fear that is there in the back of people's minds has now been realized and they're like i gotta get out of this before i lose everything and that's when the panic hits right and so that's why the people who came in last are the ones who get you know get burned unless they're they're pros who are like taking this into account yeah. and 
if you want to talk about stocks, like, you know, so like that kind of market, like the people who are really know what they're doing are hedging everything. Oh yeah. They're, they're buying, you know, puts and call spreads. And- yeah. That, that are like going to offset buying stuff. That's going to do well in a crash to offset the losses that they're going to take on other things. You can't really do that in real estate, unfortunately. Right. And real estate is a really illiquid asset. So mm-hmm. like, if you think you can sell when the market has decided that they don't want to buy, you know, you're only going to have the bot- the bottom feeders, the distressed buyers and stuff at that point. And like, there's not going to be anybody to get you out of this deal. And you, yep. the only way, like if you've got an LP interest that you need to part with, I mean, it's hard to do it in the best of times, but good luck. I mean, you're going to, the only thing you're going to be able to do is exit to some kind of vulture who's going to pay you pennies on the dollar of what you paid originally. Yeah, right? I know. So your $50,000 share, your $50,000 unit, they're going to pay you 10, $15,000 for it, right? Been there. So yep. uh, this is this is why, as Michael says, don't invest on emotion. Yes. Don't invest on the fun of it. Don't invest because everyone around you is doing it. Mm -hmm. Definitely don't get into one of those, like, you know, those contests with people where people are bragging about like Uh, how many, how many doors they own. And then because they don't own them, it's like, Oh, I own 1% of the 600 unit deal. Therefore I have 600 units. I mean, you see this all the time. I I do. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just irritating as hell. Right. So don't be one of those guys. Right. Do your homework, mm-hmm. learn how to evaluate the, de- the deals. When you're, talking, when you're talking with sponsors, ask them a question like, you know, don't just say, oh, the, great, the good times are going on forever. You ask them, what happens if we have an interest rate spike? What happens if cap rates rise? What happens if your occupancy falls? What happens if we don't get the rent growth that you're, writing, that you're underwriting? What, what rent growth, growth are you underwriting? I mean, see people underwriting crazy rent growth, right? I now. saw a deal the other day that had three years at 5%. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Now, look, they, they could get it, Maybe. but but that's not that's how not, you underwrite That's it. not your base case. <laughs> right, if you have to make the deal, if you have to underwrite that rent in order to pay the price that you have to pay for the property. That's nuts. It's probably a little bit, you know. Probably rich. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, just words of the wise, be cautious. You know, you should always be cautious at the when the market is in a frenzy, just like Warren Buffett says, you know, be, be fearful when others are greedy. We're definitely, yeah. I mean, I thought that we were in a greedy market in 2019, but this, the market has just lost its bearings now. And I think people are just, they've decided they can't lose, right? Yeah. So. I know how this all ends, why, why I've been stacking cash. So Jonathan, how can people find you? Yeah. So come join my free Facebook group. Uh, me and a couple of, you know, 12,000 of my closest friends are, are in it's the an group. amazing group. Uh, it's called the multifamily investment community. Just search for it on Facebook and uh, it'll pop right up. Um, and you can also, if you are interested in investing with me, uh, Google me at Two Bridges Asset Management, and you can fill out my investor form, and uh, we'll be in touch. Do me a favor, folks. If you are an accredited investor, go fill out the form right now, because what you'll be able to see is what Jonathan puts together versus all these other general partners. It's fundamentally different. Um, I've been seeing deals. I've been an accredited investor for 10 years, and there's a right way to do it, and then there's sales jobs. And a lot of you are getting sales jobs which are not going to end well. So do yourself a favor. If you're a credit investor, Google Two Bridges Management right now, sign up for his newsletter so you can see what deals should look like. Strongly recommended. So thanks, Jonathan. Absolutely. Two Bridges Asset Management. Two Bridges Asset Management. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs>